Breaking news coming out of HQ here. ESPN reporting Jazz star Donovan Mitchell has test positive for coronavirus along with his teammate Rudy Gobert. This happening, of course, before last night's game against OKC. The NBA suspending play for the remainder of the season with so much unknown here. Again, Donovan Mitchell testing positive for COVID-19. I want to bring in Bill Wright, our NBA senior writer, joining us this morning. And you just heard it there. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, now another piece added to this along with Rudy Gobert. Your reaction just hearing this come down. Yeah, unfortunately, my reaction is this reflects what a growing number of NBA officials believe would happen yesterday when Rudy Gobert was first diagnosed. I'm not an expert on, on viruses. I'm not an expert on the coronavirus, but talking to folks around the NBA who have been talking to those experts, they certainly expected once one player, Gobert, tested positive for there to be other players around the NBA who would do the same. It would make sense that a teammate would be the first on that list. And unfortunately, with the NBA as probably the rest of the country, this is the beginning of folks testing positive for this particular virus. Yep, Mitchell, again, uh, the athletic reporting that he was one of 58 to come back positive. The other is coming back negative. But you just touched on the, the impact of the NBA. They played games throughout that 14 day period that they say the virus takes place. Uh, the Wizards self quarantine. Toronto Raptors self quarantine for 14 days. How does this impact the rest of the league? Yeah, I think you're going to see almost every single team, as they get their arms around this topic, ask players to self quarantine. And the key word being self-quarantine. We're really in a remarkable level of uncharted territory here because the league is going to ask players to do things. The Players Association is going to get involved. We're talking about obviously the suspension of the league and just trying, frankly, trying to talk to people around the NBA, which is harder today and yesterday than it certainly has been in my career. There is so much chaos. There is so much uncertainty. There is so much confusion that teams, I think, including the NBA front office, are going to try now to err on the side of caution. Remember, it was yesterday that the league made a decision that some folks around the association thought was a little short-sighted to play games in arenas without fans, and just a few hours later, they had reversed that decision and suspended the season. That's how quickly this story is moving. That's how quickly things are evolving. And I think folks around the NBA recognize that and are preparing for whatever comes next and trying to know that whatever it is, they've got to deal with it as it is. If you're Adam Silver, what is the conversation like with all these teams when we're talking about addressing this? Is there testing coming down the line? You know, what do you think his first business of operation of, of kind of attacking this now, even though they're behind it a little bit? Yeah, I think you used the exact right word. They have to attack this problem and this issue. I think it's going to be several things from what I've heard talking to folks around the NBA. One, you said it, you have to have testing for those who have been in direct contact now with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. That's going to be a growing number of players and, and just NBA personnel. Two, you have to be prepared to take the next step, whether that's understanding when the game gets to be resumed, what happens to next season, how you deal with a myriad of issues, including, as one executive pointed out, a number of hotels and fans and businesses that expected the NBA to provide them fans and income. It's going to be issue after issue, moment after moment, and I think at the risk of, of, of throwing a cliche out there, they're going to have to take it one day at a time, and they're going to have to do today and going forward what they did not do initially yesterday, and that is probably err on the side of, of caution and be overly sure that they're putting public health and the health of NBA officials and players first. Other leagues and other teams have put timelines on a period where they want to kind of maybe push something back or suspend play for two or three weeks. Is there even a chance that we can see the NBA resuming at any time later this month in April or even May? Because a lot of people are talking about cancel the season and maybe just hold off and, and not do playoffs for a while. Is that an option on the table for the NBA? I would honestly be guessing because the people that I have talked to, some of whom are very connected and very high up in the NBA, have told me that they would be guessing. I think the only thing that is certain is the possibility, and it's not a certainty, but the possibility that game stoppage and or dramatic adjustments to the schedule could go on in the long term. I've certainly had a growing number of people suggest to me that if it's an if, if and when the NBA playoffs and finals were to resume this season, you could see a Kevin Durant playing. You could see 
a Ben Simmons playing. People have made the point that the NBA's separate discussions about moving the calendars to not compete with the NFL so directly to have the finals in August, we could have a test run of that, not out of any desire for the league to have been delayed by two months, but just by what's going on with this coronavirus. So the true answer is we don't know. And it will really depend on what happens in the broader health sphere in this country. If this virus, if the coronavirus abates, if the spread doesn't spread at the rate that, as I understand it, public officials think it will, then certainly games will come back. But if this virus continues to spread, both among players and among the general public, we could be in for a pretty long delay. I know we're not talking college here, but just from their perspective, seeing the NBA shut down to suspend play, uh, the ACC saying they're full go, other conferences not really flinching at this happening with the NBA. Do you see this being an option where they will shut down the tournaments, the conference tournaments, and maybe the NCAA tournament in their near future? Yeah, I think you're going to see, I think the NBA is probably going to be at the forefront of this for a lot of reasons. One, if you make the decision as a sports league, as a sports conference, to continue to play in any fashion, when the NBA does not and something goes wrong, I think you're going to be held accountable in a very different way. It's also worth pointing out, as someone pointed out to me from a, from a front office in the NBA last night, the NBA yesterday had a top public health official, a czar of infectious diseases, go before Congress and speak to a multitude of issues but name check the NBA, specifically say in that person's estimation, that person's expert opinion, the NBA needed to play games without fans. When you are name checked before Congress during a global pandemic, you're going to have to reassess. So the NBA, in part, I think it's at the forefront for that reason and give them credit for making a pretty bold decision yesterday. But I do think in talking to NBA folks who are speculating by the rest of sports, certainly those folks around the NBA do not believe they're going to be in isolation as it relates to being the only professional sports league or, or conference who make pretty drastic decisions. Really, not even the coming days, maybe even the coming. <laughs>